Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I just uh, got one of my tuition reels out. This one will never go fishing again. We'll explain why. But every now and then I'll see something and uh, it'll just strike my curiosity. It'll be a reel that I haven't worked on before. And I'll just take a moment uh, to see what I can learn from it. And the cost that I pay for the reel I call tuition because, well, that's what you pay for your education, right? So this is one that I, I found at a local flea market under a dollar. I'm not quite sure if it was 50 cents or what it may have been, or maybe it was even 50 cents and I'll throw in a lure or something. I don't know. It wasn't expensive. Interestingly enough, what caught my eye is it is a Garcia. It's a Garcia spinet. S-P-I-N-E-T-T-E. And I found the curiosity with this one because it's not Garcia Mitchell. It's Garcia by itself. And it is clearly an older design. I'm going to have to do my work on this one. This may be the 1950s. And I'm guessing it was probably sold as a low-end uh, fishing reel combination rod, a rod and reel sort of thing based on, well, kind of the technology behind it. Well, what is that technology? First and foremost, it's got a bale that's not very sophisticated, but it works. I call it a hammer bale. And as you'll notice, there's no line guide. It's just a bent piece of wire. There's no roller bearings. There's no springs to, to manage the, uh, the bale flip or anything. There is two internal springs here. They're kind of like life, uh, leaf springs on a car. When you go to set the bale, it pushes this spring up here. You can Maybe you can just see it. There's a, there's a spring that's raised. We'll see if we can lower it. You'll see it lowers it here, raises it there. And then as that bale rotates, it's going to slam into the uh, arm of that reel. You can see the paint loss. Well, why is that? There's where it's going to hit. And when it hits there, it's going to collapse this, and that spring is actually going to push it down to help it close. I call them bang bales. And while it's not just for the lower cost reel at all, uh, those bales are found on uh, early pen spin fishers, for example. Now, they have line guides and rollers on them and the like, but at the end of the day, that uh, arm is going to drop down on that spin fisher bale. It's going to come over and it's going to whack a stud and it's going to push it back and around. There are other examples of that that uh, are out there all the time. Uh, for example, the Daiwa reels have that as well. All right, this one's missing a spool, so it's not going anywhere, even if you can make it work. You couldn't mount to the rod. It's got two broken tabs on there, long gone. I'm interested to find out when I open this up what this is. It might be a click mechanism. It's not, or it could be an anti-reverse, right? There, there's, if there was no drag in here, well, you're fighting the, the reel by back pedaling or, or back reeling. Sometimes they call it back reeling. I call it back pedaling of associated with a cycle but uh, this may be a trigger that if you could turn it would um, make it a uh, anti-reverse active but well you can't do that right well let's open this up and see what we have here so before i do that i want to encourage everybody to please subscribe to my channel if you like the art of reel repair if you like to learn how fishing reels are made if you like a little bit of the history behind fishing reels uh, i do all kinds of things in addition to just plain doing the how to repair videos. And if you subscribe, well, you'll see uh, the ones that I'm posting, and I try to post every day. And uh, you'll also get a preview of the ones that are coming up that will be posted uh, in the future. If you hit the notification button, those, uh, those notifications that I was telling you about will tell you exactly when that, uh, when that video is loaded to YouTube, and you can uh, go ahead and uh, Take a look at it, see if you want to uh, view that one or not, learn a little bit more about the reel. And hey, you don't even have to pay a dollar for a tuition reel to watch the video. It's all uh, courtesy of some of the things I'm doing to show folks uh, how to do it themselves. That's kind of what Second Chance is about, just giving the reels a second chance. We've taken out the two side plate screws. And underneath we have a, uh, oh, I'm going to call it a rather pedestrian design. The first part is going to be a stud, I am assuming, and that stud should be removed by pulling out. Oh, it's a screw. Yeah, see, that was wrong right away. How do you like that? 
that should release the axle shaft. And I'm not sure if this is on the main gear. Nope, it's off the main gear. So this is your cross wind block. Now we have a nut up top here for the, uh, the rotor. And I always keep a set of uh, ratchets close by so that I don't have to put down the reel when I'm going to uh, try to remove an, a nut or a screw. Let's try it in a traditional left-sided thread. This is a traditional left-sided thread. I remove that. Now normally, if I'm repairing the reel, these parts are going into a parts tray. Right now, there's not a lot of parts, and I'm trusting my judgment with this. When you're repairing a reel, don't trust, don't trust your judgment. Take pictures along the way. I'm doing that with uh, the video camera, and that'll give you a view as to how to put it back together again, just in case you forget. All right, this should kind of remove off, but I'm thinking they may also screw off. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, we can just kind of pull it off. And then we have a, th a set screw here, true to a Mitchell kind of a approach. There's a set screw holding that in. These are, you find these all the time on the, like the, the Mitchell reels of the day. You can see, I'm not sure if this is a full pin or not, but now we should be able to remove the pinion gear. And of course, what I did here was kind of a little bit of a mistake. I should have detached the handle before I removed the pinion gear. Not sure if I'm going to be able to do that. Well, we're going to leave that for now. So this button here is not moving. I'm just trying to take a look around what we have here. That is an anti-reverse. So this is a frozen anti-reverse in the case. And that uh, if I could switch that, it would drop this down. And I'm sure it would engage the uh, anti-reverse in the main gear. So it's very interesting. It's a very old reel and an older design. There's a lot to be learned from this reel in terms of how the reels of the day were made. I'm going to just kind of put back what we can put back here. And uh, it was well worth my dollar investment to find out about this reel and to, uh, to let you know a little bit about how this reel was made, how it came together. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you've learned something from it. So if you're a first responder or essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe. To all, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.